Hey everybody, Blue Hair Dave here. I'm super excited to put this video out. What this is, is I, uh, it's about how to get leads, how to get leads for less money using Facebook or Google ads, how to get more leads, how to build an email list, how to get subscribers. It's the techniques on how to attract people. Now people, there'll be videos and I've got videos on here's what you do with the landing page and here's what you need to do to set up your ad account. This is how do I get the leads? How do I get them for less? And how can I make money with them? And it's about 35, 40 minutes long. And I made a presentation for a virtual digital expo. Basically, Affiliate Summit got canceled this summer, so we couldn't do it in live. So we had this big event. I think there was something like 5,000 people signed up for this thing. And I was the headliner keynote speaker for the first day of it. And I just got finished with all that. And I actually did a recorded version of this for my YouTube subscribers. And so I wanted to give you guys the presentation, so I just recorded it and I asked for comments. So go ahead and comment below. I'm going to answer them. But this is if you're a business and you need more customers, or you're doing leads for to build email lists, anything where somebody you want somebody to get in touch with your company to fill out a lead or to build an email list or to be a customer to buy something, these techniques work and they can be the difference between an okay year and a really good year. And the gems that there's diamonds in this thing, I basically go through of. I give you a crazy amount of techniques. So just go ahead and watch it. Watch the entire thing. It's it's like a course in itself on lead generation. So go ahead and watch it. And I'm super stoked to present this to you guys. And enjoy and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. And comment. I'm going to answer the comments as best I can to answer your questions. Thank you, YouTube subscribers. And here we go. Subscribe. Perfect. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Blue Hair Dave, and I'm super excited to give you a presentation today. And I'm just going to get right to the meat of everything. So I'm gonna be looking down and giving this presentation because I'm working on my computer. And it's about how to get more leads and customers for less cost, because this is what everybody wants to do, right? You wanna, if you get customers for less, then you make more money. And everybody wants customers, and everybody wants to get their customers for free or even make a profit while getting them, and I'm gonna show you how to get as close as possible that I know how to be able to get your subscribers to your email list or your customers, because let's face it, we make most of our money in digital marketing uh, on the remarketing, or you make a good portion of your profit with remarketing, and the best way to remarket is to collect an email list. I'm gonna get into all this, but I wanna show you, these are actually techniques for the actual lead generation, not saying like, hey, grow a list, and let's have a nice day, see you tomorrow. This is really about like, how, how can I get that list and get the subscribers for less cost? And uh, Smencils, my kid gave me a Smencil and it smells like blueberry, so I love it. So I'm gonna be looking at the screen. If you see the, I have a standing desk, so if you see it shake, it's because I'm excited and I'm jumping up and down. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So how to get more leads and customers for less cost. So my intent today, I'm gonna to show my favorite ways that I have of getting interested customers and subscriber lists like I just mentioned. I'm gonna show you how to offset or eliminate your email and lead acquisition costs as much as possible, which will help you remain competitive or become competitive or become even more competitive. Uh, and this is kind of the number one, the biggest hurdle that a lot of affiliate marketers, digital marketers, and people who wanna get leads as a hurdle because they, they need leads and they have different sources. You use Facebook, you use affiliates, you use all kinds of different sources to get your leads. And if you can get them for less or acquire them for less, then you're going to make more money. So if you're a small list owner, then you'll be able to prosper more. And if you're a large list owner, then you can spend more to acquire even larger lists. So if you can knock 20% or 50% off your lead acquisition cost, it's probably all going to be pure profit for you, right? And that's more money to spend and uh, you'll be able to spend a larger budget to, and get a larger portion and just the business will grow. Um, so if you get a lower CPC cost per click uh, and a lower CPL cost per lead, you can get a lower customer acquisition cost because your lead is how a lot, most people or a lot of people get their first interaction with a customer. They know who they are because they've joined their list or they've signed up to get information or they want to get a quote right away. So that's your customer acquisition. So you can do this better with two things that I'm mainly going to cover today. And that's with a better attractive offer for somebody because if you're like hey you put see nobody puts a face an ad on facebook and says sign up and we'll come over to your house and slap you in the face a couple times right because nobody wants somebody to come and slap them in the face 
But if you're like, hey, I'm going to show you how to save an extra $400 a month on XYZ, give me your email address. People are like, okay. Or you're going to say, I know where instead of you paying $1,000, it's only going to be $150 per month. And you're going to save a ton of money. Give me your email address and I'll show you how. People go, okay, it's just an email address, right? So that's an attractive offer and I'll explain all this in detail. And also a better ad and landing page cohesiveness. This is a problem. And I'm just going to show you some examples where things can change so well. Like the A-B testing that people do. And if you've done a lot of testing, I'm sure you know that there are certain fundamental elements you have to have on a landing page. And we're going to talk today about lead capture because we're talking about getting leads. So in general, I'm not going to talk about having like a long form filled out necessarily. I want to talk about how to get an email address. And you can do long form too. It works for the same thing. Um, but there's a different sales pitch that needs to go on with a long form than just getting an email. And that'll depend on your landing page, which I'll go into detail. But in general, there's a rule before you even start. The more you want people to fill out, the longer your sales page needs to be. So if it's just an email address, you don't need a lot on your web page, your landing page, your funnel, first page of the funnel. You don't need a lot on it. And I'm going to go with the basics of what you do need and sometimes the only thing you should have, in my opinion. All right. So first, I always start these presentations with why. And if you're watching this and you are, if you're watching this and you're already in the industry, you know why you love digital marketing, right? You love digital marketing because we have always cool like, like the virtual expo, um, uh, affiliate summit. There's so many cool things all around the world that you can go to and have fun. The other thing that if, uh, digital marketing gives you, and if this is for if you're brand new, because you already know what I'm talking about if you're already in the industry. But if you're new to digital marketing, it's a really cool industry. So if this is if you're watching this and, and it's your first time learning about digital marketing or you're kind of want to get your feet wet or you're kind of half excited, you don't know, it's the best occupation I've ever done in my life. And I've tried a lot of things, okay? So it, it gives you freedom because you can work from anywhere if you want to work all the time, or you can automate a lot of stuff with digital marketing. Once you figure out certain things and you've got things established, you can kind of put them on autopilot and just check on them once in a while, which is the best thing. So these are just pictures of some things I did, like Super Bowl celebrations, and I like to sit, this is my backyard. I like to seriously, I like, and when it's summertime, in the middle of the afternoon, I don't do much. Like I'll work in the mornings and I'll work at night maybe. Uh, and also all the, the trade show stuff, like uh, um, the, the great uh, part, like affiliate ball and stuff. There's awesome fun parties and it's just fun. So digital marketing, love it. And if you're experienced, you know this. If you're new, I'm telling you, okay? Uh, so the industry is awesome. And I'm going to go through this and get right to the meat of uh, things because I don't have that much time today. So, But if you're small – you can, this presentation is going to help you because you can get outspent by other big people out there. So if somebody's got a $50,000 a day budget, they can kind of steam and they have things really refined on their end. They can steamroll you and you're not going to get that much in. It's going to make your ad costs go up. So, but if you can reduce or eliminate your capturing costs, you can compete with these guys because you're going to get your leads for a lot cheaper than they are. So, and also if you're doing large scale lead gen, then you can gain further return on your ad spend by getting your subscribers and leads for less. It's just common sense. So I use this for email list building because I do affiliate marketing. My main thing since I've been, I've done a lot of different things in digital marketing, but my bread and butter has always been affiliate marketing because I don't like to have the hassles of having my own brand to sell something, my own white label, my own garage full of something. I'd like to just say, here, Quicken, here's your refi leads. I could make more money maybe if I have my own lead dis distribution company and then also sold to Quicken or something, but it's a lot more headaches. It takes an infrastructure. I don't like those things. I like to be, I'm in my office or I'm outside. That's, that's what I like to do, and I can't do that if I'm doing that. So I do affiliate marketing. And a little bit about me, so you're like, why am I even listening to you, Dave? My name is Dave Giovacchini. Um, I'm what's known as a super affiliate. Uh, I won a two comic Club award and an AFI award, so I kind of know what I'm talking about, at least been recognized for it. I've been doing this over 13 years, and I've failed enough at a lot of things that I know what not to do and what to do a lot of the time. Uh, so, and I'm not a computer expert by any means, and I've kind of learned the hard way of advertising, of just figuring things out and asking people and then fixing things. And also, I use these techniques. Uh, I don't just teach them. I that my day job is 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 doing these things. So I'm just sharing with you what I use to help me. 
Uh, I got put on the affiliate summary advisor board in 2019. Uh, so that was a cool thing. I got to help advise about you know, what direction affiliate summary was going to go to. Yeah, I love digital marketing. And some people call me Blue Hair Dave because sometimes my hair is blue. And it's been like that for like decades. And I'm not going to say how old I am. But it's something that, uh, yeah, the name stuck and it's always been stuck with me. So I've, I've used these techniques I'm showing you here. I built uh, at least one of the lists I built was over 640,000 subscribers. Uh, and I basically got that list for free because I was breaking even on the front end and then started making a profit while collecting these email lists. So just to see how powerful that is. So if say you've got a list of 100,000 people, which is a pretty good email list if it's targeted or a million, right? Um, and you're able to get all those people for free and then remarket to them every day or a couple times a week or whatever it is your frequency is for email, you know that you make a lot more money afterwards once you've got these email lists than you do on the front end. So there's really nothing stopping you from making a ton of money if you can get profitable or even just break even on the front end collecting your customers. And that's I'm gonna show you how I'm able to do that. Um, and how does this apply to you right now? Because you're probably facing the same exact problems. Um, the number one thing for online businesses is going to be ad spend. If you're doing SEO and getting free leads, it's more of a time investment kind of thing. But if you know, I like pay to play, meaning that if I spend a dollar, I like to know I'm going to bring in $3. Or if I spend a dollar, I like to know I'm going to bring in $10. Or if I spend a dollar, I know I'm going to bring in $100. I like to know those numbers. That way, it's it's everything's right there. There's not a lot of surprises. Um, so I'm not much of a build out my content website and wait six months and hope it all works. But you know, that's great if that's what you do, but you can also do some paid ad campaigns, but and eventually you're kind of going to get outspent. So I like to eliminate this factor uh, by just doing paid ads and scaling them up quickly as possible. And if I can get my leads for less, I can scale more quickly. Also, I, I'm an emailer by trade for years. When I collect my own data, the email service providers like me a lot more, and if you're in the same boat, getting your own data is gonna save you a lot of headaches. So what people usually do, or what we usually do, is the old arbitrage model. And that arbitrage model is going to be where there is a, you have your email or a paid ad, let's just say it's a Facebook ad. Majority of people are using Facebook. I know lately people are a bit angry at Facebook with the account closures and all that, but it's still the number one, probably most popular platform out there to use for ads, Facebook ads for a number of reasons, targeting, all these kinds of things. So you've got your ad and then it goes to the advertiser page or your sales landing page. They buy something or fill something out, you make money, right? That's great, but if you're not spending this money, then you're not making money. And there's nothing, you gain nothing except for that one single transaction. Now, being an emailer, I'm like, oh, I should get the email. If I'm, if I'm paying to communicate with these folks, why not get an email while I'm at it? So you'd be shocked at how many people don't collect emails while advertising something, okay? So maybe your ad looks something like this for a mortgage, right? This is just something I found when I Googled a mortgage ad. So, you know, it's a simple ad, somebody clicks it. Now, the problem with just putting an ad out, even in the first place, whether it's on native advertising or Facebook or whatever it is that you're advertising, people know it's an ad and they scroll past it. Okay. Now, if it's enticing enough and you're like, rates are 2.5% right now or 2.7 right now, because rates are right now, they're super low. So you can actually get somebody to fill something out because the rates are historically low. People that watch the news are sophisticated enough to maybe understand that. And they, they understand they're going to go check with somebody to see what the rate is anyway. So it's kind of an easier play, right? But if it's another, you know, the rates are going up, nobody's going to want, they're like, ah, mortgage ad. I don't want to, I don't feel like dealing with a hundred people calling me right now. So I'm going to skip by it, right? Cause they scroll past it. It's an ad. There's ad fatigue. People recognize ads pretty readily. Um, these are more targeted, but it's also more expensive to get somebody to click on one of these. And I'm going to show you a little way that I get so people can click to talk to you or get more information about something related to a mortgage or whatever it is for cheaper. So if this costs three to five dollars a click or whatever it's going to be, whether it's you know you're doing it on a Google Ads or whatever it is, what if we can get this down to twenty cents a click or fifty cents a click or heck even a dollar a click if you were paying four dollars a click? So now it's twenty percent of the cost. So your ad budget just shrunk 
the amount you need to spend to hit the same uh, um, you know uh, performance. That that's 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 a game changer with your business, right? So what I found that worked best for me because I want to collect emails is there's two things here with this approach. I decided I'm going to stick this in the middle. I got a Facebook ad. And before I send it to the advertiser page, I'm going to collect the email because I don't want to waste this money. If I'm going to spend money, I want an email address. If somebody clicks my ad, I want an email address. Whether they buy this or not, it's kind of immaterial because I want the email address. Because guess what? They're still interested in whatever it was this was, most likely. But now I have an email. So how many times has somebody clicked on your ad and not filled out or bought something on your web on your website? Most of the time, the vast majority of the time, right? Maybe you have a one in 10 conversion rate. Maybe you have a one in five conversion rate. Maybe you have a one in 50 conversion rate. If you do, you probably need to fix something. So maybe, but so this way, I'm at least getting something. I'm getting an email address. So I like to, it, I like to collect the email and then send them onto the advertiser page. It just so happens that when you have an ad and you offer somebody something that they want, your cost of your click is going to go down. I'm going to get into this in a second of how, how you get something that they want. Collect the email and then send them out on the advertiser page. The money you're going to make from the first go around, which is your first contact with the consumer in Facebook or Google Ads or whatever it is, that's going to pay for your ads offset your ad cost, pay for them all together, or pay for them and you'll make a profit, which is a dream come true. So the arbitrage, you have to make a profit, right? At this, I, I, this version, I didn't care if I made a profit. I just wanted to break even and get close to it when I started doing it. And then I realized, well, if I do this well enough, I can actually make money doing it. I said, well, ah, it's a perfect, it's perfect, right? What, what, what more do you want? It's, you can't ask for more. Uh, so the secret though is having a lead magnet, some, an attractive offer to offer somebody that might be interested in whatever this product is. So I'm going to give them something and I'll get it in the next slide. So, Hey, you might want this to help save a ton on this. And here's a bunch of ideas and resources for you involving this subject matter. Give me your email. I'm going to send you this ebook that explains everything with links and whatever you need. Okay, they gave me the email address. Now they go to the advertiser page. Hey, did you know that you could do this subject matter faster, easier, quicker? Oh, okay. Well, I might as well fill this out. I'm here now. Boom. So you got the same person who was interested, but you got them for a fifth of the cost maybe. And they're still going to your sales page. Win-win, right? Because it is a win-win. Right. So the lead magnet secrets are going to be this. And I'm going to, you know, I'm going to go through and give examples of stuff. So there's a fair exchange of value going on here. And you give somebody something that they want. The better it is, the easier it is, is going to be to get you to get them to give you the email address. Now you could say, we'll give you a free quote for auto insurance. And mm, that's not going to work, right? Everybody's offering that. Nobody wants to know about that, but if you offer them something for auto insurance and it's like uh, top 10 tax breaks that you can get you know, money refunded for your car or the types of cars that you can get bigger tax breaks for, did you know that your pickup truck might, might qualify for a tax break or um, um, something with auto, right? Or did you know that uh, there's a grant to buy certain vehicles? In the United States, see a list of all these grants because you know, maybe it's electric vehicle grants or something. But guess what? Electric vehicles, they need insurance too. Anybody who owns a car needs car insurance. So you're going to get them to that page and there's still an automobile owner interested in something to do with automobiles or auto insurance. And there's more to this because an auto owner also need might be interested in auto warranty or a loan for a new car or a bad credit subprime loan for a purchase of a car, etc. So it actually helps you get a wider demographic that's interested in all kinds of different subject matter. So you give them something, a fair exchange of value. And this is very important, the second part. And it's a good idea 
And I'm not saying these techniques are the end all be all because everybody has a billion different ways, which is the beauty of digital marketing to do things. Target the demographic interested in the product, not the product itself. So with like, so auto insurance was just the one I was just using because this is off the top of my head. That's anybody who owns a car. It's not somebody whose auto insurance is coming up tomorrow and they need to renew. That person is definitely the perfect client for auto insurance. But it's harder to target those people and it's more expensive to target those people. So why not just get everybody who might be interested and then get them in front of your sales page but collect their email in the first place. So if you're collecting the email, you know you're going to make money with that eventually. And you're going to make money in the front end. So you trade off some targeting for a much less expensive lead and you still get in front of your consumer with your product. So target the demographic. If, say, um, you have a diet pill, you can't even advertise that on Facebook, right? That's against their terms. That's black hat. But people who are interested in a diet pill are interested in losing weight or exercising more and burning more fat or something. Well, guess what? The only real best way to do that is with a diet plan or something. So why not offer a wellness plan of a free diet plan and exercise routine and how to burn fat in 10 minutes a day? It's free. The same person who's going to buy that pill is going to buy is once that free diet. And then they get they give you the email, you give them the free diet plan, Immediately after they give you the email and hit submit, you say, hey, did you know that if you're going to do this keto diet, you know you can lose weight a lot faster. The keto diet with Bob's keto pills or Jane's keto pills. Now, you know, you, you then now you get somebody buys the keto pill that just paid for all your ads. OK, and if you're asking, I kind of go in this a little bit, but if you're asking, how do I get these lead magnets? Just make them curate them on the Internet research. Find a bunch of information. Link down to other people's websites if you want. Because the truth is, a lot of people, they're not even going to open it and read the, the, the lead magnet anyway. But you want to give them to people that do. You can even stuff your lead magnet with affiliate offers or different ideas to do. But give the people something that they want. Because uh, customer satisfaction is very important, especially with your Facebook ad and Facebook pages. So, But this is all, when people get information online, just curate it all. Collect it all like you're a librarian at the Smithsonian, and put it into a fat ebook and give it to them. It's not going to take that long to do. And now you've got a product that people want. They want information all put in one place. You're a concierge of their information. You're like, here you go. Here's how to do this. Here's how we do it. So giving a fair exchange of value gives the audience something that they need. It's going to save money. It's going to save time or it's going to help them. These are the things that people want. Because people generally don't want to work harder than they need to for something. They want it done faster. They want it done for cheaper. Everybody. All of us. And some people don't know what to do and they just need help. So give them the information that they need. They're going to give you an email in exchange. It doesn't cost them anything. Target the demographic interested, not the product. So you need to find the, the find that might need the product. Find the people that might need find people that might need the product and give them something that they want. You'll know if it's something they want if they give you the email or not, okay? And then show them a way to do that faster or easier or for less money, like I was saying. And this leaves more products you can also advertise to them because when you advertise to the demographic, like I was saying, if you say it's the weight loss pill, well, they might be interested in wellness altogether. So now you've got this list of people interested in wellness. They might want yoga programs and there's a fluid offer with yoga or sell a yoga mat with Amazon. There's a million different things you can do if because everybody's, I, I just think about what I do. You know, if I'm interested in a subject matter, I'm like, well, how do I get this? How do I get that? How do I go this? And then boom, next thing I know, I bought like five different things for it. So you're going to trade off some targeting, but the leads are going to be so much less expensive and you're still going to get the consumer in front of the product. So the offsetting cost more than makes up. So you're going to go more volume and the more the higher the volume is better because you're going to get the email. So you get a good, a wider audience, which has good and bad problems with it, but a wider audience has more needs. You're going to get more people. So I'd rather have a wider audience. Um, and it's a lower cost of acquisition, which equals a higher ROI. Now, most people, a lot of people would say, but Dave, 
a narrower, really interested audience is the best audience you can have. Absolutely. But why pay more for it on the front end when you can do that on the back end while making money? So I said in the beginning, retargeting is where you're going to make a good portion of your profit. So you'll find out as long as you do proper analytics, and I can't do this right now and explain all this, but do proper analytics and tagging and trace these people, the people that open the emails, the people that click the emails, the people that visit certain portions of your webpage and the sales process is the people that go to checkout and don't buy. Those people are your highly targeted, interested people. If you did, if you if you only tried to find those people on Facebook in the first place, you're going to pay way more money. Why not get a big audience and then do the sifting for almost free on the back end? So you're going to make money while sifting everybody down to find the gold nuggets that are in the in in your pile of uh, of mining uh, sand that you had, right? So you could. I'd rather pay. For, I'd rather do it on my time and make money while I'm sifting those people through to see who the real uh, nuggets are. So an example, so refinance leads. What do these people have in common, okay? All refinance leads, they own a home. I de- it's not a lot of people that are filling out refi forms for their neighbor, okay? If you, and refinance is hot right I'm just using an example, right? So, because leads pay anywhere from, what, 35 to 65, 70 bucks right now if you're doing affiliate marketing for them. All the people, they all own a home. So you can put a refi ad on Facebook. Now you got to go through, they don't let you target or anything for refinance on Facebook at all um, because of their, uh, their credit rules. So instead of offering these people a refinance, they all own homes. So why not offer them something homeowners need? It's not the refi. You can offer the refi later. But they might want to learn about tax breaks for homeowners, discounts for homeowners, local programs they have for homeowners, grants for homeowners, News and info for homeowners. Whatever it is for homeowners, this is for you to test. Offer them that. And then offer them the refinance. And go, by the way, I know you were looking for money to save on the tax breaks and discounts. You can do that. It's going to take some time to to go through and go through the hoops to get that. But you might be able to get this $20,000 or $100,000 you need right now to build your pool by getting uh, by refinancing your house because last time you got a rate it was four and a half and they're two and a half now or two point seven five, so you might be able to get that hundred grand out and have the same exact mortgage payment. Oh, okay. Let me fill this form out. Boom, you make sixty five bucks. That's what, if that makes does this make sense? I hope. Okay. So, but the other thing that homeowners are also going to need is is the homeowners they might need roofing, they might need a home warranty, they might need. Uh, to do remodeling in their house and home advisors or whatever. They might need solar on their house or want solar. They might need home repairs. There's a ton of offers, the leaf gutter thing. There's a ton of offers that homeowners need. So just make sure your terms on your landing page are like, hey, we're going to give you this information. And by the way, we're going to contact you with things that are homeowner related and the homeowners might need. Okay. So now you're not just, cl- you're collecting an email for a refi. But you're also collecting one for a roofing lead, a home warranty lead, a remodel lead, a solar lead. So this list is going to be good for all these things. So, so a refinance leads sample. So <clears throat> maybe it's like a title that's free book of new rules for 2020 of homeowners to get lower home payments and help. I just made this up and it's not something that I use, but you get the idea. And so the general function of this is going to be you want to collect an email and then you're going to send the email out with an autoresponder with the information in it. They see the ad. They go to your landing page. They say, yes, I want this info. Enter their email, hit submit. And now you've got an autoresponder chain going off on your emails. A whole other presentation. But And then um, you're going to redirect to a thank you page that's going to have a quicker solution. So if the people want to grant money or whatever it is, and be careful with the grant money thing on Facebook because Facebook, uh, anything that you go into that's kind of like grant related or freebie related, eventually the customer satisfaction score is not very high. So just be careful with that. But that's a great, you can get super cheap homeowner leads if you do that. So redirects to a thank you page and it says, by the way, if you need money right now or you need to have a lower mortgage payment, you should really just take 20 seconds and find out what your new rate can be with Quicken or whatever it is or whatever the mortgage affiliate offer you have is. Oh, I might as well do it. It's right here. So they're seeing your ad. 
And all you have to do is fill it out, and now, boom, you get a lead. And then all the people that didn't fill out that lead, they get emails. Like, hey, you know, you still need that money? You should check into the refinance. Boom. And people will fill out leads every day. And you make more money. More money than you would have in the first run. So, uh, yeah, and so I just have an example here. Do you know rates are at 50, like, so the, the thank you page to say something like, do you know rates are at 50-year lows right now? Why not see if you can figure this out in one minute or less? Some people might not know it's 50-year low right now. It's a homeowner, and they're like, wow. Or they might be like, I don't have a mortgage. I get these um, my responses a lot for the email. And they're like, I need money. I don't need a mortgage. I need to borrow money. And I could just spend all day replying and being like, but you can get this money for maybe 2.7% interest. You're not going to find, if you get a loan, like a, a personal loan, the interest is going to be 16, 25%. Why not get a small loan on your home, spread that over 30 years, and now your payments, I mean, you know, $200 a month instead of being like $1,000 a month or whatever it would be. So a lot of people don't understand that, and then you just point it out to them. So... So instead of focusing on just refinance, you're going to focus on homeowners in general, and you can increase your return on investment on all the different products you offer. So a brick and mortar example is this for roofing or solar turf company. So in, in the solar and roofing business, generally, not everybody does it this way, but if you have a roofing company, you probably also have a solar company too. And if you've got a solar company, you probably have a roofing company too. And if your guys aren't pitching both, you're missing out on a ton of money. And uh, let me see if I have a thing for, okay, so let me explain this real quick. This is kind of not off topic, but it explains why you need to be promoting other items. So say you have a, a roofing lead and uh, no, say it's a solar lead, okay? And somebody comes to your house to give you a lead on solar. <laughs> And the salesman's like, hey, I got solar. They come to your house, though, and your roof's 25 years old, 30 years old. Maybe your roof is a 30-year roof or a 30, 40-year roof, whatever it is. They're not going to put something that's got a lease on it for 25 years on a roof that's got to be replaced in 10 years. And if they do, and if that's happened to you, then you should be kind of maybe angry about that because they're going to have to take the solar off to fix the roof and all that. So, right? so what the guy can say is, is hey, I can fix your roof. When we do the solar and you get a tax break for the roofing, you have to replace to put the solar on your roof. Did you know that? And then they could also figure out a way to make it so that part of the roofing ends up kind of in the solar plan because you're allowed to use the allotted amount. And uh, I'm sure that the solar companies have a way of figuring out how to make a lot of that. So you could essentially almost get a free roof replacement for the cost of what your solar would be anyway and the solar is going to get rid of the guy's electric bill so you called and you're like huh so if i get this much solar i'm basically have i can pay my roof will be paid over the solar term and the roofing's pretty much free it's hard to say no to that right and then they're on the way out he's like oh by the way sir boy it looks like boy it's a lot of water especially in california right uh where i'm in california how much do you spend on your water bill? Is it was it four hundred bucks a month, six hundred dollars a month on water? So I know my, mine's mine's bad or higher in the summer, uh, and it'd be like you know I could get turf, and there's also rebates, tax rebates for that. So right after we can get this all wrapped up, and I can even give you a turf quote where after two years you're going to be saving money. So in two years you're not going to have a power bill, and you're you're not going to have a water bill, or your water bill is only going to be for your toilet. How, how's that sound? Okay. So now the salesperson, you got one lead and now you just sold them instead of just solar, it's roofing and turf. So now you've got a $40,000 job instead of whatever the, would have been for the one, for the one job, like a $10,000 job. You just made four times more money. So it's the same thing with email marketing. And that's just a, a brick and mortar example. If the sales team is doing things right. Boom. It's, you're still paying the same for the lead but you're just being smarter about it and you're making more money. Same thing with the homeowners instead of just the refinance. If you can get refinance people for cheap, great, because you can also do homeowner offers. The problem is, is that people fly right by refinance offers because they're like, ah, whatever, it's an ad, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to talk to some guy on the phone. So the recap, 
And I'm going to show you some examples too before time runs out because I want to take some Q&A. Um, so uh, comment with questions or whatever it is that you have and I try my best to answer the comments. So recap, lower cost per click usually gets you a lower cost per lead. I say usually there's exceptions, um, which means a lower customer acquisition cost. And if you have a lower customer acquisition cost, you make more profit. You make more money. So say you have a business model right now and you're newer to affiliate marketing and you're like, oh, I'm making 10 grand. So I'm making a, six figures, which I'm stoked with, right? I'm making six figures. I'm making 10 grand. But man, I just, I, I wish I could make 20 grand a month. Well, if you can get your cost per lead cut in half, you can make 15 grand a month just for making a change. And if if you can cut that price down, maybe you have more for ad spend. So now you can take that 10 grand and start making 20 grand profit, right? So now, you, you know, you, now you're making top 1% money or whatever it is, like, you know, whatever the, what, 225 grand or whatever. That's a big jump for making small business adjustments. These aren't huge adjustments. That's the what I'm trying to get, you know, buy on here. So offer valuable exchange. Don't even get me started. You could also collect uh, phones and do SMS. I know a ton of guys who do a lot of SMS. It's more money. Associate it with a demographic of your main products. So go after the demographic, the people who need have these needs, and offer them something that they want for free. Collect the email and then offer them your product. This is going to offset your ad costs. You're going to build up an email very quickly, and then you're going to be, be able to remarket the same products and other products to the same folks because they have the same group of needs in general. This is gonna increase your return on your ad spend and it's also gonna increase your return on your investment. Profit. So here are some things to try with ads. And because there's certain things and I'll just brush by these but they're very important small things to make sure you probably wanna have in your ads. Attract your demographic with a call out. And I'm gonna show you an example in a second. Be clear and to the point in the first two sentences of the ad. So what do they get and why do they need it? Because that's what people want to know. And if you're going to beat around the bush, how many people actually click to enlarge the ad and then look at the bulletin points? I would include bulletin points on the ad for sure if you're just collecting an email. Because if you do your selling on the ad, you don't need to do it on the landing page. Because when people get the landing page, all you want them to do is fill out their email. And I'll show you an example of that too. The ad should be different and stand out. Now, you don't want to start with a long-ass story necessarily if it's a long pitch sale maybe but in general you want to let people know what it is that they're going to get and why they need it because sometimes you'll say you get this and people go why do i need that well you need it because of this this and this make sure it should take you two sentences be clear and concise if it's not explaining your two bolton points which is what do they get and why do they need it it doesn't need to be on there it's wasted space. It's wasted words. It's it'll it'll hurt your conversions to have it on there if it doesn't talk about what do they get and why do they need it. And then be different and stand out. Um, I've done a lot of things where I've got pages and my testing, and I'll have a picture of the nice house, and then I'll have a picture of a house that's all funky and crazy, or even burnt down or something. Those do better than the regular house because it's just people are fatigued. They're like, oh, I don't know, a stock photo of a house, blah, blah, blah. But if you give them something original, that's why people like the TikTok things or the people, you know, ah, hey, I save money. Hey, I save money. Hey, I save money. Because it just stands out. It stops them for a second and then they read the what do you get and why do I need it part. And they go, oh, or the call out on top. Hey, homeowners, do you need money? So you, you know, get get free money or whatever, what I'm just saying, you know. Hey, homeowners, get this and that because this, this, and that. Oh, okay. And it all works in conjunction. But you have be amazed how people don't follow these rules. And they go, well, my ads aren't working. Well, because nobody wants to. You've got two seconds to get their attention. So I just literally just went on to Facebook and looked at ads for like a split second and found ones that are kind of okay, right? So, so make sure any ad that you put out has these features. And then it's, uh, like I said, it's surprising how many people don't have these. So let me show you right here. So we have homo. This one has a call out right now. It says homeowners. And they, they go for the power companies, right? It's probably Pennsylvania and like West Virginia or something. They tell them what they're getting. Solar now for zero down. Yes, you read that right. You can get solar for no money down. Call to action. Click learn more if you to see if your roof qualifies. So, hey, you, per person with a house, right? Because if they have a house, they have a roof and they might want solar, <laughs> So, hey, you, get solar for zero down, click now. 
a lot of ads don't even go through this. It's it's crazy to me, right? Seems intuitive, but just make sure your ad has it. And also repeats what they get down here. So also, I'm not saying this is a bad one, and they might have done millions of dollars of testing on this one. Um, I did have some traffic when I looked at it in Facebook Ads Library. So this is your ad. I like it. But I bet you anything, if you're out there, if you change this to something a little bit more attention-getting, instead of just being like, you know, the average suburban neighborhood, I bet that you're going to get your leads. You're going to get more clicks. The clicks are going to be cheaper uh, and you'll get more leads for cheaper if you try that. So everybody get that? All right. And then for a landing page, you're never paying full price for software again. And this, this isn't the same company, by the way. I just went and found a landing page of another ad that came up and clicked it and it showed me and it was just boom. And I think it's just from AppSumo. AppSumo is very popular and does really well. This is their email uh, uh, submit page. Now they do have information down here because people are like, what's at Sumo? It explains it in case the people landed on this page and didn't look at an ad that was explaining what they get. But it says, you get the why and the what and every time. Why You're never gonna pay full price for software again. Right, and then it's what, like we'll send you, what am I gonna get? We'll send you the hottest deals to your inbox so you're always in the best kept software secrets. So it explains everything in an email. That's that's like that's those are your options. It explains it all. It says boom, boom, the why and the what. Give me your email. Now, if you start having a bunch of stuff here, you're like blah 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 blah. You might lose people. You're not trying to sell them a two hundred dollar product or a thirty seven dollar product or a ninety nine dollar product or a thousand dollar product. Right here, you just want email, so you don't need to go crazy with it. All right, so simple. You always give them the why and the what and let them know what they're going to do. And that's it. That's all you really need for an email submit page, okay? So questions, comment. I'd love to answer them. And I hope this was informational about how to get leads cheaper. If you're out there and you're doing some good traffic or even if you're new, this can seriously be the difference between making a, you know, uh, it could be a couple hundred if you're small. It could it could be a difference between a couple hundred or a thousand bucks or two thousand bucks more a day. And if you're bigger, this could mean the difference between you know like ten, twenty, thirty, uh, fifty thousand dollars extra a day. Just trying some of these suggestions. You know, test them, see what works with what you're doing. Um, but I think you'll find it that you'll most of the time you'll make more money if you add some of these techniques. All right, awesome. Uh, so uh, go ahead and comment, and I'll try and answer all the questions I can. And uh, thanks for listening. All right, bye-bye.